Hi all, Mr Thomas here and welcome to another Virtual Geography lesson. We're continuing our look at urbanisation by investigating a case study of the city of Mumbai. Mumbai is undergoing rapid urban growth and so we're going to be looking at the background of Mumbai, the opportunities that rapid urban growth brings to Mumbai and the challenges Mumbai now faces because of it. So sit back, relax and let's begin. Case studies are detailed investigations of a single place or location that are used to highlight or showcase a specific geographic feature, process or problem. Today's case study is going to be on Mumbai, which is a city in India, and the rapid urban growth it's facing. India is a NI, or a newly emerging economy, so you can use this case study to answer exam questions like these. So let's start with the background of Mumbai. Mumbai is a city in India and it's found on the western side of the Indian Peninsula. Mumbai is also one of the most densely populated cities on the planet, with an estimated population of 25 million, which is um, just massively large. To like, just so you know how big that is, for comparison's sake, New York has a population of 8.3 4 million. So Mumbai has a population three times that of New York and a little bit more just for good measure. Mumbai is also home to the iconic Gateway of India, which was a stone archway erected in 1924. It was built to commemorate the arrival of King Emperor George V and Queen Empress Mary, the first British monarchs to visit India. In light of the Indian independence from British rule, the first battalion of the Somerset Light Infantry passed through this archway with a 21-gun salute. This was part of a ceremony on the 28th of February 1948 to signal the end of the British Raj, or the British ruling in India. Mumbai contributes more than $300 billion to India's GDP, or India's gross domestic product. GDP, or gross domestic product, in its simplest terms, is the monetary value for the entire country's goods and services. Mumbai alone is responsible for a quarter of India's industrial output and 70% of India's maritime trade. Mumbai has a range of industry, from textiles all the way to petrochemicals. And on top of that, it's also the home of many of India's largest businesses and their headquarters. This includes the Reserve Bank of India, which is India's central bank. They control the issue and supply of the Indian currency, the rupee. Mumbai also acts as a financial centre in India and stimulates economic development throughout the region thanks to its busy port and large stock exchange. And if all of that wasn't enough just to show you how significant Mumbai is, Mumbai is also home to the Bollywood film industry which is responsible for the production of over a thousand movies per year and is worth around 180 billion rupees. This equates to around $2.3 billion, and for comparison, Hollywood produces around 600 movies per year and is worth $136 billion. So let's move on to what's actually going on in Mumbai. Thanks to natural growth and rural to urban migration, Mumbai's urban population is rapidly increasing. <laughs> So natural growth and rural to urban migration were topics I covered in last week's urbanization video. There's a card on screen now. So if you haven't got the foggiest of what I'm going on about, you might want to click that, pause this video first, of course, watch that one and come back. Cool. People in Mumbai are now living longer thanks to improvements in housing and healthcare. In the year 2000, the life expectancy of someone living in India was around 62 years old. However, that's now jumped up to just under 70. So people are living longer. And on top of that, the people migrating into Mumbai tend to be younger and so are going to be more likely to have children. The next reason that Mumbai's urban population is growing is rural to urban migration. So let's look at the push and pull factors affecting rural to urban migration in Mumbai. Remember, push factors 
push you away from a place, whereas pull factors pull you towards a place. So in rural areas, the need for farm workers have been greatly reduced, as technology has made farming techniques greatly more efficient. PUSH FACTOR! <laughs> in the urban areas of Mumbai, there are greater job prospects with a wider range of higher paid employment, especially in industries like the textile industry. PUL FACTOR! In the rural areas, there is a significant lack of healthcare and education. PUSH FACTOR! In urban areas, there is a greater quality of housing. Many of the houses have access to running, clean water and electricity, which isn't as common in the rural areas. Pull factor! Pull factor! <sighs> in rural areas, there are limited job prospects. For the young, it's mainly low-paid farming work. You get a push factor! You get a push factor! And you get a push factor! We're all getting push factors! Oh, I love doing this. We now know why Mumbai is growing, but let's have a look at the opportunities that are presented from this urban growth. So we can put these opportunities into two categories. Economic opportunity, which means opportunities that involve money, and social opportunity, which improves the lives of the people that live in Mumbai. So firstly, let's look at the cash cash money money, or the economic opportunities. The expanding population of Mumbai has created a greater demand for goods and services. This in turn generates more employment opportunity, and many of the migrants who move to Mumbai find work as either hairdressers, couriers, or cleaners. Also, small businesses thrive in the Dravi slums, generating around $650 million of profit per year. Now let's look at the social opportunities. Healthcare in Mumbai is improving. Sion Hospital, which is Mumbai's largest hospital, used to only have 50 beds in 1950, and now has 1,500 in 2020. In Mumbai, there are around 1,000 primary and secondary schools, providing educational opportunity for the children of Mumbai. However, all that good wouldn't come without some bad, so now let's look at the challenges Mumbai is facing as a result of this massive urban growth. Let's begin with the slums. There's a local joke in Mumbai that due to the large number of squatter settlements and slums that Mumbai should actually be renamed to Slumbai. In Mumbai lies the Dharavi slums, which houses 770,000 people in just 2.1 square kilometres. To help visualise just how crazy this is, Bristol, which is a city in the UK, has a population of around 535,000 in an area of around 110 square kilometres. The Dharavi slums has 50% more people than Bristol, and yet situates them all in an area 52 times smaller. That's not even funny! How is that even possible? How do you fit that many people in such a tiny area? I mean, look at that map comparison. Look at it! There are more people living inside the tiny little orange dot than there are in that entire red area. How? How is that doable? Explain! Someone explain! Okay, I know how it's doable, they live in slums, but still, why? Just how? I don't... It's crazy. It's madness. It's actually mind-blowing. The Dharavi slums aren't the only slums in Mumbai, though. There are actually multiple slums and squatter settlements, many of which intrude onto private land. These slums are often poorly constructed and incredibly overcrowded, and so can lead to genuine health risks. Mumbai also lacks essential infrastructure that provides sanitation, electricity and clean water. In some areas of Mumbai, access to clean water is limited to just two hours in the morning through a standpipe. 40% of Mumbai's households aren't actually connected to the sewer system, meaning that there are open sewers and polluted rivers that run throughout the city, which as you can imagine poses a definite health risk. Also, on a related but definite side note, the BMC, which is the governing body of India, rated themselves a 3 out of 7 for sanitation and cleanliness. So I have three questions. How is that a 3 out of 7 for cleanliness and sanitation? That is a genuine, flowing health risk. Look at it! So, I have three questions. 
How is that a three out of seven? I want to, I want to know. Please explain. Secondly, what is a one out of seven? If that's a three, what hellish nightmare could possibly be a one out of seven? And my last and third question is how do we destroy a one out of seven to make sure that it never sees the light of day? Thank you. So back to the challenges Mumbai is facing. The increasing population size and all of these health risks is putting additional pressure on the already strained healthcare systems and educational systems in Mumbai. Despite the growth of Sion Hospital, treatment wait times can still be incredibly long. And though there are educational opportunities within Mumbai, classrooms are often incredibly overcrowded as there is a definite lack of teachers. There are also plenty of environmental challenges within Mumbai. Millions of tons of waste are dumped into the Mithi River. That's the river that runs through Mumbai. There are also estimated to be two million cars in Mumbai that create gridlock and additional air pollution, therefore increasing the health risk to the population. There is also a shortage of skilled workers such as engineers, and so most of the people that migrate to Mumbai end up working in the informal sector. This means that there are jobs with low pay, high risk and no job security. Cool. The last challenge that Mumbai faces is that of poverty. It's been suggested that one in five people live in abject poverty and survive on incredibly small amounts of income per day. A great article to read if you really want to find out how dire the situation can be is Descent Into Hell by the BBC. There will be a link in the description. There are many potential solutions that have been proposed and trialled in Mumbai. The government has promised to give each resident who has lived in Mumbai since the year 2000 28 square metres of housing. And the government has made many attempts to improve the sanitation, water and electrical access to many of Mumbai's residential areas. In addition to this, there are charities and agencies like the Hamara Foundation. The Hamara Foundation helps young people out on the street by improving their educational opportunities and reducing their health risks. And so that is our case study of Mumbai. It really is a fascinating and interesting place. And so I urge you to go and do some of your own research. There are some amazingly difficult challenges that Mumbai has to face, but there are also some really cool bits about it. And it's just incredible. I really, really recommend that you go and do some of your own research. Just take like 15 minutes, type in Mumbai on Google and find out a little bit more. However, that ends today's video. As always, there is a worksheet and an answer sheet down in the description below. And with that said, it's time for you to pack up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Dismissed. Staying behind after class, I see? Well, welcome to the bloopers and outtakes section. A section I add onto the end of all of my videos to show you that everyone makes mistakes. Learning is hard, and you'll find that from time to time you mess up, and that's completely okay. Without a bit of practice, you can't be perfect. So, to emphasise that point, here are all the funny times I messed up making this video for you today. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy the bloopers and outtakes. So, we are con- we are con- we are continuing our look- we are continuing our look into urbanisation by investigating. Uh, Mumbai is currently undergoing rapid urban growth and so we are going to look at, at <laughs> we are going to look at case studies are detailed investigations of a specific location or place that are used to showcase or highlight a specific Mumbai has a range of industries from textiles to petrochemicals it's also the home of many of India's largest businesses headquarters that's really hard to say businesses is it these health risks and the increasingly large population of Mumbai is putting additional pressure on the already strained healthcare and educator oh, with the absolute beauty that is the plug time trumpet I write plug time on it, so... Look at that! Look at the plug time trumpet! Look at 
This is the plug time trumpet. I shall blow it whenever there is a plug time. So here is the plug time trumpet. I've made it. It's beautiful. Um, as you can tea from its... Have you can tea? Have you can tea from... I'm not even speaking English anymore. As you can see from its beautifully structured design, I'm about to start a virtual engineering series. Uh, I'm really not. This is abysmal, but it is the plug time trumpet and I shall blow it whenever plug time is available. So what tune do I use for plug time? No. I like that. That's good. 